Hi, welcome to Mimi's Little City Homestead. I'm glad you're here. If you're new, welcome. And if you're returning, thank you. Today we're going to do something that I've had a few requests for and that is canning whole blueberries. And this is the end of the blueberry season. These are some of the last later berries. There, there are a few other late varieties that are still going in August. These are from our local UPIC that is in Tecancha, and that's Harvey's Farm Market. And I have five pounds of berries here. We're gonna heat them up slightly, make a simple syrup to can them in, and then can them in our hot water bath today. You can can these as a raw pack, or what some people call cold pack. You can can the raw berries by filling your jars and then putting your simple syrup or hot water over them. But I'm doing a hot pack, so I'm heating up my berries and I'm gonna use the juice from the blueberries to make my simple syrup and then use that to fill in my jars. Um, that is one other thing too. You can can these in just plain water. Now, if you live in the city like I do, I have city water. I try to use filtered water for anything that I can. It just seems to work out better not to have all those things, the fluoride and all the other things that are in my water. So I have a pot here and I'll show you this. That is my five pounds of blueberries. I have them in my jam pot. And I have sorted through all of these berries, all five pounds, this palm size at a time. Under running water, I would be able to wash out any of the stems and then I could pick through it if there were any berries that didn't look like they don't need to be in my blueberries. I don't want to eat those. So what I did was just pick out any expired blueberries or unripe blueberries and took off all the stems because I don't want any stems in there. So this is completely cleaned. It took a little bit of time, but it's worth it so that I don't bite into those little leaves or stems when I'm using my blueberries. I'm gonna use these mostly for baking. You can make um, like a blueberry crisp, you can use it in muffins, you can make blueberry pancakes. There's a lot of things that you can do with it. Also the reason I'm canning it in a simple syrup is because it's supposed to keep the berries integrity better over time and help with the color. And if you don't want the simple syrup in them when you're using them, you just drain them. Use the berries after that. There won't be that much on mine. I'm using a light simple syrup, and that's gonna be five and a quarter cups of water to two and a quarter cups of sugar that I will make from this juice. Um, if you wanted to do more of a heavier syrup, kind of like the kind you get in your fruit in the store in a can with heavy syrup, it's going to be five cups of water instead of five and a quarter, and it's gonna be three and a quarter cups of sugar instead of two and a quarter. So five and a quarter cups of water and two and a quarter cups of sugar for the light syrup or five cups of water and three and a quarter cups of sugar if you want a heavier syrup, that's all up to you. Or again, like I say, you can just can it in plain water, but it needs to be hot water. So heat up your tea kettles, your electric tea kettle, whatever you need to, to get your hot water. So when you're ready to put the jars of berries with the hot water into your hot canner, and get ready to can them, you're close to the same temperature with everything. Now, on a regular um, hot pack, we would do 180 degree water, not quite boiling, not even quite simmering. If you're doing a raw pack or cold pack, as people say, then you would use water about 140 degrees in your canner but you're still gonna put your boiling water or simple syrup over your berries that you pack in your jar. So this is the way we're doing it today. And I'll show you how we're gonna get it started. We're gonna turn the heat up on this, first of all, and get this to a boil, not a hard boil, just a regular boil. Once it starts boiling, I'm gonna time it for about a minute and then I'm gonna shut it off and take this pan off the stove. And then we'll go to our next step which will be making the simple syrup while we cover our berries in a bowl and keep them warm because it only takes a few minutes to make a simple syrup. Okay, as you can probably see, mine hasn't even come to a boil yet and they've already plumped up and changed colors, gotten darker, but they're getting pretty plump here. So I think what I'm gonna end up doing is taking them, there's one that's split that I don't want, taking them out now before they start splitting. 
and just go ahead and put them in my bowl, my glass bowl that I have here. Drain them as best as I can. So you're not even probably going to get them to a full boil is my guess, depending on how many you have. This is five pounds, like I said, so I gave it an extra couple minutes just to get hot and make sure they were all getting hot and working out okay. But you don't want them splitting if you can possibly avoid it. So try to empty that out the best that you can. You can even dump this out if you're not going to use the juice like I am. You can also just dump them through a strainer drain all the water off of them and that would be a quick way to do it because we don't want to overcook them. And it smells like blueberry juice in here. These are some sweet blueberries. I tasted a few of them as I was cleaning them and oh my gosh they're so sweet. They smell sweet. They're that good. Okay so I got all of them out of there. While these are hot I'm just going to cover them with a towel and we'll keep them over here out of the way while we make our simple syrup. Now I'm going to need five cups of this, so we're going to turn you around here and we're going to measure all of this out. And it's a pretty clean, clear juice. Like I said, if it was yucky or kind of looked dirty to you or something that you could not use, a, you know, something to skim it off, just use regular water to make your syrup. And if you're using regular water and no syrup, then of course you're going to want to use just clear water. You're not going to want to use this probably. So we're trying to get five and a quarter cups. I think I'm just about there. So I have five and a quarter cups of my blueberry juice. And if you can see in the bottom, it's mainly just seeds, blueberry seeds and, and two stems that I must have missed. So this will be just fine. So again, to make the simple syrup, it's going to be five and a quarter cups of your water or juice, green juice. And then we're going to add into that two and a quarter cups of sugar. So there's one and a quarter. And, we'll get the one up here. and this is, again, it's a light syrup. If you like heavier syrup on your fruit, go ahead and make the heavier syrup recipe. But this will be good enough for me for what I'm using them for because I'll be using the blueberries mainly for baking. So back over to the stove. Moved in so you can hopefully see both pans. This is on a medium high to bring this up to a boil and I'll be using just a wooden spoon to keep stirring it. We want that sugar to dissolve into the water or the juice and we're not gonna boil it. We're just gonna simmer it. Once it all gets dissolved in the water, then we'll just shut it off and let it set here hot for a couple of minutes. In the meantime, I have my hot water bath canner in here. It's not to a bubble, it's not to a simmer, but it's heating up. That's gonna be about 180 degrees and inside that I have my jars heating up. Now you don't have to heat up your lids and rings. If you like to, you certainly can. You know, you don't boil them. You just put them in some very hot water. And if you like to do that and continue to do that, that's fine. Modern canning guidelines tell us now that with the lids that they changed over about 10 years ago, they don't need to be heated up in water. They will soften up and adhere to the jar during the boiling water process. So all they suggest you do is wash them in warm soapy water, rinse them, dry them off, which is what I do. But if you like to heat your lids and rings, go ahead and do that. But do be sure to get your jars hot because you're gonna be putting some very hot liquid and berries in them. And then they're going in that hot canner and you don't want thermal shock. And that's where the temperature difference between the jar and its environment or outside air in the canner is so different that it will break. And that does happen. And some jars, I have some very, very old jars. And those can sometimes get to a point where they, they stress and crack because they don't last forever. Eventually that could happen and it's not a big deal. Try to feel out on your jars when you're washing them in your hot soapy water. Go around the rim of it and look around the jar and the bottom for any kind of stress cracks or chips. And then you're gonna have to use that for maybe putting dry goods or things like that in it, but you're not gonna wanna use it for any kind of heat canning anymore because you'll have, that, that definitely will break. So check them out good before you use them. So the sugar seems to be pretty well dissolved in the juice here has not come up to a boil, but I'm gonna let it get to just a slight boil before we shut it off. Gonna move our berries over to the counter. And as far as cleaning your berries, I mean, you're bound to have a stem here or there. You can try to hand pick them like I did and you're still gonna get stems. But I just think that it's a lot easier to pick them out while they're raw, than pick at them as I'm filling the jars. Anything I 
have go into the jars will probably just get picked out later when I open the jar, so. Okay, now we're starting to come up to a slight boil, and that's where I'm gonna shut it off. Give it a couple more stirs so it doesn't stick or anything, and then just leave this here for a minute while I get things ready over at the island to can things up, which the first thing will be is getting jars out of the hot canner. So, first we're gonna start with, ooh, <laughs> One of the berries just broke and squirted a little bit right on the counter there. I'm going to start with four pints. We'll see if we need any more than that. But I'm going to go ahead and put my berries in and give them about an inch of head space for the berries. So you can kind of tamp them down a little bit, get as many in there as you can. Go on to the next one. Do this and see if it goes down a little bit. A little, but we still could get rid of a few of those. That's about an inch. That's about an inch. If you raw pack, they're going to end up still looking like this in the end because after they've cooked in the water bath canner for 15 minutes at my elevation, which is less than a thousand feet above sea level, Anything over that, you're gonna to have to change your time. I think it's 1,001 feet to 3,000 feet above it would be an extra five minutes and above 3,000 feet would be five more minutes. So 15 for me, possibly 20 to 25 for you, depending on where you live. So now we have the berries in these jars. We're gonna go ahead and add in our syrup. I'm gonna give a little bit of berry juice to this one. These are all far enough under the one inch head space that I can get each one of them a little bit of that berry juice flavor. And then we'll go ahead and fill in the rest of the way to about half an inch with our simple syrup. Now, once I debubble this, if it doesn't go down, gave okay, that one too much simple syrup. If it doesn't go down a little bit to make it a half an inch of head space, after I debubble it, then I will just pour some more out. And we'll start with this one. He just needs to go back in. A few berries need to go back in there. So we got about a half an inch of headspace in him right there, right now. I'll debubble this, because there's sure to be some in there, and there is. And as you can see, it brought down the amount of water quite a bit. Actually, I'm gonna remove a few more. I just wanna keep right around that. It's important, your headspace is important. And that, of course, is the space between your food and the rim of the jar. We wanna end up with a half an inch. So I'm gonna give that just a tiny, tiny bit of simple syrup to bring it back up above the fruit, get it to my quarter inch of head space, and we're good on that one. The next one here, we're gonna debubble it, see what we end up with. We're gonna have to add more simple syrup to this one also, just the tiniest bit to get it to that half inch. It's better. You know, if you get it in there and it don't look right, adjust it. You want it to be, it's much better to adjust it and come out with the right amount of headspace than to just say, oh, well, that's okay, that's good enough. You wanna make sure you get it as close to the recommended headspace. That's what they've tested these recipes at. That's why they give you those numbers. They kind of want you to follow those so you're, they know you're canning it just the same way as they did. These are pints. You can can your berries in quarts if you wanna do that. If you wanna have berries to make a pie filling with later, if you didn't make pie filling, you just want your berries for your pie filling, you can do that in a quart and then I would be canning quarts for 20 minutes, and some of you 25, and some of you 30. So, quarts, five extra minutes. Now let's see if we can aim to get closer to the amount of berries we're supposed to have and not more. And we may or may not get enough for a full pint with what's left. If we don't, they're just gonna go in the refrigerator and they'll turn into blueberry pancakes because you wanna make sure you don't can a partial jar. That's way too much head space, and you don't want that. That one is okay. This one's gonna be a partial jar. So we'll just go ahead and fill it to cover the fruit with the simple syrup and put him in the fridge. This one we're gonna cover with simple syrup until we get up to that half inch. So I do have some juice left, no big deal there. And we're gonna take our paper towels now in vinegar. I just like vinegar for my own peace of mind. You can use plain water. Now I'm not canning him, but I wiped him off anyway, because it's habit. Take this one around the rim, get all that sugar, any kind of juice, anything else that might be on there, and off the where the ring threads are is a good idea. You don't want any of that juice getting between your seal and the jar, as you can see. 
there's definitely juice on there. It was a little sloppy. So we got those two. The reason why I have a little bit more vinegar in my bowl than what I really need to wet down my paper towel is because I put it in my canner and that helps keep mineral deposits from my water off of my jars, makes them a little more sparkly. I put about anywhere from a quarter cup to maybe a little more than that in my canner usually. And so that's what I just go ahead and dump into my bowl here. When I'm done, I'll dump it in the canner. It's not a big deal if you don't. That's not a requirement or a safe canning method. That's just my thing that I like to do, a lot of people do, because it does keep your jars cleaner when they're in there boiling in that water. If you don't, they might come out with a white uh, powdery on top of them because of your mineral deposits in your water. So we're gonna take our jar lids, center them right on there, and I ended up getting, what, five pints out of five pounds. And that sounds about right. They say it can take a couple of pounds of berries to fill a quart. Get these all covered up and then you put your bands on just till it gives resistance and then just fingertip tight. Don't use your hand or elbow to really crank that on there. You gotta let the air out of this jar. That's the whole point of canning is to get that air out of the jar above the food there so it doesn't grow bacteria. And you can't do that if you put these on too tight. So just fingertip tight. Okay, and the next step is gonna be putting them in our canner. So we wanna get our hot jars in our hot canner. Like I said, that's about around 140 to 180 degrees to kind of keep up with the temperature of the food that we have in our jars. When you hot water bath, you have to keep your jars submerged in water. So there needs to be an inch or two above your jars in order to process them correctly. And I always put the lid on mine just because I think it stays at a boil better that way. So I'm gonna turn it up to high and bring that up to a pretty good boil. Coming up to that boil that we can now put the lid on and set our timer for 15 minutes. I'm gonna turn it down just a bit on my burner because if I left it up that high, it will definitely boil over. A lot of people freeze their blueberries, which is fine. I would freeze them too if I had freezer space. I don't have that kind of freezer space. So it comes down to deciding what I like frozen and what I like canned. One of the things I don't like canned is sweet corn. I'd much rather um, give that a quick boil, cut it off the cobs, put it in freezer bags and freeze it. To me, that comes out more tender that way. Um, anytime I've ever canned corn, it, of course it has to be done in a pressure canner and it has to can for, I think it's 75 minutes a quart. I'd have to look that up, don't quote me, but 75 minutes to 90 minutes a quart. And anytime I've ever done that, to me it's tougher. Whereas blueberries, I don't mind them canned. They're always good canned and they're handy to just take off the shelf and throw in a baked good or whatever. I don't have to thaw them to make muffins. So I chose to freeze my corn and use my freezer space for that and then can my blueberries. And I got five pretty good packed pints of blueberries that will work good in things over the winter. So I think that's the way to go if you don't have the freezer space for a lot of things. I don't have a chest freezer. So I have two refrigerators with freezers, but they're not you know her frozen vegetables and things like that are not the only thing I keep in them so I choose what to can that I think tastes good and I choose to freeze what I don't think is great to can. Okay so our timer went off. I took the lid off let it set in here for about 10 minutes because it's a little chilly in here today. But our jars are ready to come out. You need to try to lift them straight out. Don't worry about any of the water on the top. That always evaporates. The jars are hot. It's not gonna stay on there for very long. Try not to tip them. Take them out, place them on your towel about an inch or two apart so they've got room for the air to get around them and cool them off. A nice jar of berries. You can see that here. Maybe I should back it up a little bit. But that's what the berries look like when they come out of the canner. They are very hot. Be really careful with them, but I'm gonna put it down here with the rest of them. And I'm really happy how they turned out. You'll hear them pinging pretty soon when the lids start popping down now that they're out in the cooler environment. You can do this with frozen blueberries. You can do it with your frozen blueberries. If you have some in your freezer that you put in there and you need the freezer space, take them out, thaw the berries out and can them. Put them on your shelf if you got room there versus your freezer and your berries are ready for anything. Anything you wanna use them for, for baking, making pies. I tasted that 
um, simple syrup that we used. Honestly, it's very sweet for being a light simple syrup. I think it's not overly sweet, but it's sweet. I, I thought, you know, if you added cinnamon to this, add, you know, opened up a couple jars, put them in a saucepan, added some cinnamon and thickened them with cornstarch, you got pie filling. That's sweet. That's how sweet they were to me. So I don't know as I would go with a heavy syrup. I think this or possibly even a extra light syrup would be good for them. Oh, there's a ping. So yeah, they turned out really good. You can see my jars did not get mineral deposits on them. There's a little bit on the top because there's still water on the top of them. But even right now, some of these have already evaporated because they are very hot. There's only a couple of jars there with a little water on them still. But anyway, thanks for canning with me today. As I always say, it's nice to have you come along with me because then I feel like I'm not canning by myself. I have my friends here with me and we're working on things and it's pretty fun that way. So if these type of videos are something you enjoy, then maybe think about subscribing. We're going to do some more fruit before we're done. We've got apples coming up. Um, this week I'm going to a farmer's market in search of tomatoes. I have ketchup I want to make, spaghetti sauce juice and whatever else I think of salsa for sure. So if you want to be around when we're doing all that, why don't you subscribe and hit that bell so that you don't miss any notifications when I upload videos. Um, sometimes I do a live. I've only done two so far, but as things slow down, maybe I'll do some more. Right now there's enough stuff to can and enough things to do. I don't have as much time, but I really enjoy you coming along and I'm really grateful to have you subscribers means a lot to me and I've had a lot of fun so far so I'm going to keep doing this and hopefully you can come along with me and we'll try some new things. So good luck with canning blueberries, can them whole, make pie filling, make jam, make jelly. There's lots of stuff you can do with them and you can freeze them too. So thanks a lot and I'll see you in the next one guys. Bye.